Hello everyone, and welcome back to Top 10 Trends. War. War is rife with confusion. Fog of war in video games represents the lack of intel you have at any one time. It's a decent representation, but in real life, military mistakes are not so forgiving. These are the top 10 worst mistakes in military history. Special shout out to the time Australia fought a war against emus and lost. Number 10, the Battle of Little Bighorn. The Battle of Little Bighorn, known to the Lakota and the other Plain Indians as the Battle of the Greasy Grass, you, also commonly referred to as Custer's Last Stand, was an armed engagement between the combined forces of the Lakota, Northern Cheyenne, and Arapaho tribes, and the 7th Cavalry Regiment of the United States Army. The battle, which resulted in the defeat of the U.S. forces, was the most significant action of the Great Sioux War of 1876. It took place on June 25th to the 26th in 1876, along the Little Bighorn River in southeastern Montana Territory. The the fight was an overwhelming victory for the Lakota, who were led by several major war leaders, including Crazy Horse and Chief Gall. The U.S. 7th Cavalry, including the Custer Battalion, a force of 700 men led by George Armstrong Custer, suffered a major defeat. Five of the cavalry's 12 companies were annihilated and Custer himself was killed, as were two of his brothers. The total U.S. casualty count included 268 dead and 55 severely wounded. The public response to the Great Sioux War varied in the immediate aftermath of the battle. Number 9, The Battle of Lake Tr Trasimene. The Battle of Lake Trasimene was a major battle in the Second Punic War. The Carthaginians, under Hannibal, defeated the Romans under the consul Gaius Flaminius. Hannibal's victory over the Roman army at Lake Trasimene remains, in terms of the number of in terms of the number of men involved, the largest ambush in military history. They never expect elephants, do they? In the prelude to the battle, Hannibal also achieved the earliest known example of a strategic turning point or turning movement. As Hannibal passed Lake Trasimene, he came to a place very suitable for an ambush. And hearing that Flaminius had broken camp and was pursuing him, he made preparations for the impending battle. Along the hill-bordered skirts of the lake, Hannibal camped where he was in full view of anyone entering the northern defile, and spent the night arranging his troops for battle. In less than four hours, most of the Roman troops were killed. The Roman advance guards saw little combat, and once the disaster to their rear became obvious, fought their way through the skirmishers and out of the forest. Of the initial Roman force of about 30,000, about 15,000 were either killed or drowned while trying to escape, including Flaminius himself, who was slain by the Gaul, Ducarius. Another 10,000 are reported to have made their way back to Rome by various means, and the rest were captured. Polybius reports losses of only 1,500 for Hannibal, most of them Gauls. Number 8, the Battle of Yarmouk. The Battle of Yarmouk was a major battle between the Byzantine Empire and the Muslim Arab forces of the Rashidun Caliphate. The battle consisted of a series of engagements that lasted for six days in August of 636 near the Yarmouk River, which today is along the border of Syria, Jordan. The result of the battle was a complete Muslim victory, which ended Byzantine rule in Syria. The Battle of Yarmouk is regarded as one of the most decisive battles in military history and marked the first great wave of early Muslim conquests after the death of Prophet Muhammad heralding the rapid advance of Islam into then Christian Levant. In order to check the Arab advance and recover lost territory, Emperor Heraclius sent a massive expedition to the Levant in May of 636. As the Byzantine army approached, the Arabs tactically withdrew from Syria and regrouped their forces at the Yarmouk Plains. After being reinforced, they defeated the numerically superior Byzantine army. The battle is considered to be one of the greatest military victories of Khalid ibn al-Walid's career. It cemented his reputation as one of the greatest tacticians and cavalry commanders in history. Oh wow, with only about 60,000 soldiers, he routed almost a million Byzantines. He lost 3,000 men, but the Byzantines lost 50,000, at least 120,000 according to primary sources. That is a hell of a victory. Number seven, the Battle of Agincourt, or Agincourt. One of the two. The Battle of Agincourt was a battle of the Hundred Years' War, that was not a hundred years, that resulted in an English victory. The battle took place on the 25th of October, 1415, in the county of St. Paul, Artois, some 40 kilometers south of Chalie. I don't know, ugh, French! It was one of the most important English triumphs in the conflict. Along with the battle at Portiere, England's victory at Agincourt against a numerically superior French army crippled France, started a new period in the war, which was then dominated by English military success. After several decades of relative peace, the English had renewed their war effort in 1415 amid the failures of negotiations with the French. In the ensuing campaign, many soldiers perished due to disease and the English numbers dwindled. As they withdrew, they found their path blocked by 
considerably larger French army. Despite the disadvantage, the following battle ended in an overwhelming tactical victory for the English. King Henry V of England led his troops in the battle and participated in hand-to-hand -hand fighting. That's pretty dope. The French king, Charles VI, did not command the French army himself, as he suffered from severe psychotic illness. Wow. Instead, the French were commanded by Constable Charles de Albert and various prominent French noblemen. The battle is notable for the use of English longbowmen in very large numbers, with the English archers forming up to 80% of Henry's army. Number six, the Charge of the Light Brigade. The Charge of the Light Brigade was a charge of British light cavalry led by Lord Cardigan against Russian forces during the Battle of Balaclava on October 25th, 1854, in the Crimean War. There was a miscommunication in the chain of command, and the Light Brigade was sent instead on a frontal assault against a different artillery battery, one well prepared with excellent fields of defensive fire. They reached the battery under withering direct fire and scattered some of the gunners, but were forced to retreat immediately. Thus, the assault ended with very high British casualties and no decisive gains. All due to communication error, one little intelligence error, one small order wrong, and 110 men were killed and 161 were wounded. You'd have to be ballsy to charge down a mounted, like, I, I guess it's not a mounted machine gun, an artillery line on horseback without armor, with a sword. Terrible. Just terrible. Number five, the Battle of Changping. The Battle of Changping was a military campaign that took place during the Warring States period in ancient China. It concluded in 260 BC with a decisive victory by the state of Qin, Qin, whatever, over the state of Zhao, greatly weakening Zhao. Zhao Kuo, he assumed command in July 260 BC of an army reinforced to approximately 400,000 men. He took part of his army and attacked the Qin camp. Part of the Qin army withdrew toward the Qin fortress, drawing Zhao Kuo after them. When the Zhao attack reached the Qin fortress, the Qin cavalry ambushed Zhao Kuo's rear while the Qin light cavalry surrounded the fortress. With the enemy trapped, Bai Kui launched a counterattack. The Zhao army was split in two and its supply lines cut. Zhao Kuo was unable to continue its attack or return to the Zhao fortress. His army dug in on a hill and awaited relief. Since 295 BC, Zhao foreign policy had been dominated by opportunism and had frequently shifted between anti-Quin alliances and pro-Quin alliances. Thus, as the battle unfolded, Zhao was unable to secure support because he was a fence-riding piece of sh**. Zhao Kuo's fortification was besieged for 46 days. In September, having run out of food and water, his desperate army made several unsuccessful attempts to break out. The general was killed by Qin archers while leading his best troops. The Zhao army finally surrendered. Bao Kui ordered the captured soldiers to be executed, presumably by being buried alive. That's brutal as fuck, dude. That's fucking metal. 240 of the youngest soldiers were released to spread terror in Zhao. Sima Qian claimed over 450,000 Zhao soldiers were killed during and after the battle. That's like a micro holocaust, my god. Zhao never recovered from this defeat. I would assume losing 450,000 people is something that you don't do very lightly. Number four, the Battle of Corée. The Battle of Corée was fought in 53 BC between the Roman Republic and the Parthian Empire. The Parthian general, Serena, decisively defeated a numerically superior Roman invasion force under the command of Marcus Licinius Crassus. It's one of the most important battles between the Roman and Parthian empires, and one of the most crushing defeats in Roman history. All in all, the Romans brought about 50,000 total men, or seven legions, of people. The Parthians only had about 10,000 cavalrymen, but they roundly defeated them. Despite being heavily outnumbered, Serena's cavalry completely outmaneuvered the Roman heavy infantry, killing or capturing most of the Roman soldiers. Crassus himself was killed when truce negotiations turned violent. His death ended the First Triumvirate, the four-year period of peace between Julius Caesar and Pompey, the remaining two members of the First Triumvirate. Wow, that is, that is a very important battle to go south. It basically gave Julius Caesar the Roman Republic. Number three, the Battle of Hatton. The Battle of Hatton took place on July 4th 1187 between the crusader states of the Levant and the forces of the Ayyubid Sultan Salah ad-Din, known in the west as Saladin. Oh, that's Saladin, cool. The Muslim armies under Saladin captured or killed the vast majority of the crusader forces, removing their capability to wage war. As a direct result of the battle, Muslims once again became the eminent military power in the Holy Land, reconquering Jerusalem and several other crusader-held cities. These Christian defeats prompted the Third Crusade, which began two years after the Battle of Hattin. Saladin had a strength of about 30,000 men, 12,000 cavalry, and 18,000 infantry, and fought against 20,000 men from the Crusaders. Now, that sounds like it's not as much, but the Crusaders had over a 1,000.
thousand knights. That's a lot of knights. They're hard to kill. Unless, unless you can outrun them and then starve them for water and food. That, that would do it pretty quick. Number two, the French retreat from Moscow. Sitting in the ashes of a ruined city with no foreseeable prospect of Russian capitulation, Napoleon had little choice but to withdraw his army from Moscow. He began the long retreat by the middle of October 1812. Continuing to block the southern flank to prevent the French from returning by a different route and gaining supplies, the Russian general employed partisan tactics to repeatedly strike at the French supply train where it was weakest. As the retreating French train broke up and became separated, Cossack bands and light Russian cavalry assaulted ISIS French units. Supplying the army became impossible. The lack of grass and feed weakened the remaining horses, almost all of which died or were killed for food by starving soldiers. Without horses, the French had no cavalry. The cavalrymen had to march on foot. Lack of horses meant many cannons and wagons had to be abandoned. Much of the artillery lost was replaced in 1813, but the loss of thousands of wagons and trained horses weakened Napoleon's armies for the remainder of his wars. Starvation and disease then took their toll, and desertion soared. Many of the deserters were taken prisoner or killed by the Russian peasants. Weakened by these circumstances, the French military collapsed. Sources say that only 22,000 of Napoleon's men ever survived the Russian campaign. And number one, the Battle of Stalingrad. It was a decisive Soviet victory, but not one without cost. The Soviets had over a million casualties at the Battle of Stalingrad alone, with over 470,000 killed or missing and 650,000 wounded or sick. They lost over 2,500 aircraft, 4,000 tanks, and 15,000 artillery guns. Meanwhile, it was no picnic for the Axis either. The Germans had over 700,000 casualties, lost 900 aircraft, 1,500 tanks, and 6,000 guns. And as a result, the city of Stalingrad was basically left a giant pile of smoking rubble. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did like the video, please give it a like down below. If you want to see more content, please subscribe. What's your favorite military f up? Mine is still the Australian emu thing. I hope you guys are having a great day. Bye-bye.